Okay, so this pipe flow example um, will be a five-step five uh, problem in increasing complexity. So um, we're going to start as basic as possible here um, for the types of you know, uh, pipe flow analysis that we do and uh, um, leading into a more complicated one after um, the initial uh, steps here. So the first part here is just to determine the pressure drop along a horizontal pipe. Um, the dimensions are given as a 15 centimeter diameter pipe with a length of 200 meters. Um, again, it's much longer so that uh, we know that we're fully developed for at least most of this. Um, we have water is our material, uh, or for the, the fluid, and uh, um, the volumetric flow rate is given here as 0 0.03 meters cubed per second. So to, do, to relate the pressure drop, you know, the pressures between 1 and 2, we apply the energy equation from 1 to 2. Here we just have the pressure head, the velocity head, and the elevation head for each of the two points, and the head loss over here on the, um, the, the outflow part. Uh, it's, it's positive on the outflow side of the equation. Okay, we know that the velocity at 1 and 2 are both equal. We know that the elevation between the two are equal, and we can write the head loss uh, is just a major head loss. There's no minor head losses here. So it's just a friction factor times the, uh, you know, the aspect ratio and uh, the velocity head. Um, and then also we say here, this is the, the V velocity, which is associated with just the, the velocity that we have throughout the entire pipe section of interest, which we know for this case is equal to V1 and V2. Okay, so with this, uh, after canceling the two uh, velocity heads and the two elevation heads, we just have the pressure change, which is just P1 minus P2, the pressure drop, uh, is just the major, uh, the major loss term times gamma, which then uh, we now have the pressure drop is related to the friction factor, the length over diameter, times the dynamic pressure. We can determine velocity from the flow rate, which is just Q over A, uh, where A has the a diameter squared, and we know we can find that the uh, velocity is 1.7 meters per second. Um, we can then determine the Reynolds number, because we know we'll have to go to the Moody diagram in a bit here. So the Reynolds number, um, if we plug in the velocity, is, let me say it right this time, 227,000. So it's 2.2 times 10 to the fifth. And in the problem statement, it said that this is a cast iron pipe, if we go to uh, an appropriate table for roughness factors, we see that ca cast iron has a 0 0.26 millimeter roughness. Divide that by the diameter, which is 150 millimeters or 15 centimeters, we get a relative roughness of zero, uh, 0.0017. So now we have the relative roughness and the, and the Reynolds number. We can then go to the Moody diagram. Get it all on here. Um, so we have our Reynolds number of 2.2, is that right? Uh, almost 2.3 times 10 to the 5. So that puts us, I don't know, right about there. We have a, a relative roughness of 0, 0.0. Oh, yeah, so that's the line I drew here. This is a 0 0.001, this is 0 0.002, so 0 0.0017 is on the 0 0.002 side. So we can just kind of uh, draw a line that stays below the 0 0.02, closer to the 0 0.002 line than the 0 0.001 line. I'll say that's pretty good. Follow this one up to about there. And if we follow that over, that takes us to about, I've marked this up uh, for other problems, but that takes us to about there, which is 0, 0.0. Uh, 2.3. Okay, so we used our Moody diagram to find the friction factor of 0 0.023. Once we have that, we now know everything. We can just plug everything in and find that our pressure drop is 44 and a little bit more kilopascals. Okay, if instead we take the same system and then um, determine the pressure drop for a much smaller flow rate, 
2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed per second. So this is, this is uh, 10 to the minus 2. Now we're replacing that with 10 to the minus 4 quantities, so it's 100 times slower. So you can just uh, ignore that part there. Um, we'll have the same formula as before. So if we did energy equation for 1 or 2, we'll have the same formula. But our velocity is now much smaller. Should be about, you know, uh, a little over 100 times smaller. Our Reynolds number should then be about 100 times smaller. So we're getting at about uh, one point, you know, about a little bit under 2,000 for our Reynolds number. This Reynolds number is under 20, you know, under 2,100. So this is laminar flow. So then we don't need to use the Moody diagram. We can just um, calculate our friction factor as 64 over the Reynolds number, which gives us a friction factor of 0 0.0338. So that's a higher friction factor than we got for our turbulent flow. So if we go to get the to calculate the pressure drop, that friction factor is higher. But remember our velocity, which shows up velocity squared, is much, much lower. So we get a much lower pressure drop because the velocity is lower, even though the friction factor is, is higher. And so what that just means is that the relative effects of the pressure drop over the, the, um, um, the dynamic pressure is bigger here, but that dynamic pressure is so much lower that the total, the physical pressure drop is, is much lower. Okay, so we'll go back to... Um, this system as our base system and make it a little bit more complicated. So this is going to now be a pipe section in a bigger system. That's this section here. Nothing changed about it. It's 200 meters long, 15 centimeter diameter, has a flow rate of 0 0.03 meter cube per second. Uh, but now it's attached to a water tower um, that is 50 meters raised above the ground where the height of the water is 3 meters. And we have a flanged elbow um, here at the corner. Cast iron piping still. So you can see we're going to have a little bit more uh, pipe length to have major losses and we'll also have minor losses from the flanged elbow and the entrance region. So the question here is what is the pressure at 2 now given that the pressure at 1 is exposed to atmosphere. Again we apply energy equation from 1 to 2. Same setup here but now um, our simplifications are a little different. We have atmospheric pressure at 1, no flow at 1 because it's a very large tank. We do have an elevation change that will give us a potential pressure, which is just 53 meters. So it's just 50 plus the 3 meters. And our velocity at 2 uh, remains unchanged from, uh, you know, the same volumetric flow rate, so we get the same velocity through the same diameter pipe. But now our head loss has the major component, which is going to be the exact same as before, except our uh, length is going to be longer. We have another 50 meter of pipe to consider, and our... Um, Minor losses uh, is a new addition here, uh, but these both get multiplied by the uh, dynamic, or I guess the velocity head, uh, to give us our dimensions of this equation. Note here that uh, our velocity, you know, for the velocity through the pipe is equal to V2, so the velocity at point 2 is the same as the velocity through the entire pipe. Okay, so our friction factor is going to remain unchanged because our velocity doesn't change. It's 0.023. And it came from the Moody diagram, but now our length, we have another 50 meters of pipe. And now we need to consider our minor losses. We have a minor loss from the entrance region. Um, let's see if we can get that. Let's use this one. So we go to, this is figure 826 in, in, in the current book. Um, and this is now for any contraction that the head loss associated with it, or the, uh, the head loss associated with its loss coefficient. So the loss coefficient is over here on the y-axis. However, for our tank, we assume that our area um, of the tank is much bigger than the pipe. So that means that the ratio of A2 to A1 goes to 0, which means we can just take this value, 0 0.5, for our loss coefficient. Okay, so... Uh, that's 0 0.5. And then the other minor loss contribution comes from the elbow, right there. It's a flanged elbow. So we go to the table 8.2. Uh, you know, elbows right at the top. Notice that this has um, 180 degree turns and uh, valves and different T sections. But the one we're interested in is conveniently enough right at the top. It's a flanged regular 90 degree. That gives us a loss coefficient of 0 0.3. So now we have a 0 0.5 and a 0 0.3 adding together to get the total minor loss coefficient of 0 0.8. Um, 
we can then you know, solve for what the unknown, which is P2 in this case. Again, here we have that potential pressure term, which is going to be considerable here. And we'll see that you can peek down to the answer that that's going to be a major contributor to the, the ending pressure. But then we do have losses. And one of, the, one of the, well, it's not a loss, but some of that potential pressure gets eaten up by changing the flow from zero velocity to um, the non-zero velocity of uh, 1.7 meters per second. And that's, that's right here. That's this unity times rho v squared over 2, our dynamic pressure. So some of the pressure, some of the potential pressure gets eaten up by the dynamic pressure. And um, uh, let's see, and then our losses here are our major losses and our minor losses, which uh, this is pretty similar to that part A, uh, or yeah, part A uh, major losses, but now the length is 250 instead of 200. So if we plug everything in, we find that um, we have 519 uh, potential pressure, but uh, then our combination of dynamic pressure and the losses is about uh, 58 of that. So the ending pressure is 461.6 kilopascals. Okay, so now we'll take the same system, but again, um, ignore the, uh, the volumetric flow rate here. We'll hide it. Oh, that is dirty. Um, it's from uh, markers. Um, and so now we don't know the flow rate, but we want to have a, uh, a specified pressure at 2. So we found with the flow rate of 0 0.03 meters cubed per second that the pressure was, let me peek, 462 almost. But now we want a higher pressure. So um, maybe the 462 doesn't provide enough pressure to... to to use in the piping system. We, we need it to be higher. So is the flow rate going to be more or less, um, well, you might have a, an intuition about that. So th the flow rate actually needs to be less to then provide a larger pressure, and that's because we'll have um, uh, less losses. Well, um, <coughs> a pressure at 2, we can, we'll, use this, we'll have the same equation. Um, so actually, this is completely valid. Still, um, everything here is valid until we get to some of our actual values. Now we don't know what our velocity is at 2. So that's where we're going to start off. So the end form of the equation is exactly the same, but we don't know what the velocity is because we don't know the flow right now. The pressure at 2, though, is now 500 kilopascals. That's what we're imposing. Um, and we know that this term is equal to that uh, almost 519.4 uh, kilopascals. The combination of the dynamic pressure and the losses here we can plug a bunch of these numbers in, but we don't know the friction factor and we don't know the velocity. So with that, we can then relate the velocity squared, but it's still a function here of f. And as we simplify and as we simplify, take the square root, we get that the velocity is related to 1 over the square root of f. Well, this is a relationship between f and v, our friction factor and velocity, but... Uh, But the Moody diagram also relates, is also a relationship we have here between our friction factor and velocity. So we have two unknowns here and two relationships, but uh, it's a complicated relationship because the Moody diagram is highly you know, nonlinear. There's no way to, re to give the relationship there um, in a linear fashion um, where we're just plugging one thing in and knowing what the other one is. Um, and the same goes for this relationship for our, for our specific pipe flow uh, system. So uh, we can also, to then use the Moody diagram, we can then, we'll need to, to calculate the Reynolds number, and we can do this except V again is still unknown, so we can at least get a relationship for V in terms of, uh, um, you know, the Reynolds number in terms of V. But the way to actually solve this re requires iterations. So we need to go to the Moody di diagram multiple times. So this is how the process will look. Start by assuming a friction factor of 0 0.03, calculate it from this equation what the velocity is, and we get uh, this quantity. Use this velocity to then plug into here to get the Reynolds number. Go to the Moody diagram and determine a friction factor. Um, I think I'll just, uh, you know, since we've already showed that in this video, we'll just skip this step, but if you do that, you get a friction factor of about 0 0.024. That does not equal the original assumption for the friction factor. 
So then we go to the we go to another iteration where again we assume the friction factor is equal to 0 0.024. Plug into this one equation or I equation I have written here. We get a new velocity, a new Reynolds number. Go to the Moody diagram, and we're getting closer here, but this wasn't good enough. The friction factor we got out of that was 0 0.0235. So still not equal, but we're getting closer. If we iterate again, plug into our velocity, uh, our formula that will give us velocity, get a new Reynolds number, we then find, go to Moody diagram and find that the friction factor is exactly what we assumed, and that is going to be our final quantities for friction factor and velocity. Well, now we know the velocity, we just multiply that by the area to get the, the volumetric flow rate. And here we get the volumetric flow rate is 0 0.0172. Compare that to... Um, the flow rate of 0 0.03 when the pressure drop was about 461. So for this flow rate, the pressure drop is, is 500. Or not the pressure drop, but the actual pressure at the end. So a smaller flow rate here gives us a, a higher pressure at the end because the losses are less. Okay, so for now the last, the last step five here, we'll consider a um, going back to the uh, 0 0.03 uh, volumetric flow rate throughout the whole piping system, but now we'll add on a, a pipe section here that has twice the diameter of, of before. So what we have to do here now is do the whole uh, energy equation from 1 to 3. If we do that, we'll go through the, you know, things look very similar, the atmospheric pressure, no velocity at the top of our water tank, we know the elevation difference is 53 meters, and now our velocity at uh, at two, not our velocity at three, but we know our velocity at two equals the velocity through this A segment of the pipe. But we also have, and so we'll have the major losses for this part, which will look very similar to what we had before and the minor losses from the elbow and the entrance region. But now we also have to include this B segment as a second, you know, head loss term. Right? We need to keep them separately because their velocities are different. Um, so the velocity at 3 is the velocity through this whole pipe in the B segment, right, uh, which we can then calculate uh, from, the, from the volumetric flow rate. The volumetric flow rate must stay the same in all of these. We know that the friction factor for, part, for the A pipe is the same as that we did, we calculated in part A of this problem, 0 0.023, because the velocity is still the same there. And we know that uh, we have the minor losses, still the entrance is 0.5, the elbow remains the same as 0 0.03, but now we have an expansion region. Um, let's see. In the expansion region, uh, we need to go to, I don't think I have it printed out here, so I'll open up the book to right here. So this was that other one we had, but now we're in an expansion region. And what this says to do is calculate your areas, you know, get the ratio of A1 to A2. Luckily, we have that right here. Our A1 over A2 is just going to be the diameter of the A section over the diameter of the B section, which is a one-half squared, or um, uh, 0.75. Sorry, this is uh, 1 minus this quantity, so this is just 0.25, and then 1 minus that is 0.75, and if you take 0.75 squared, you get 0.5625. Um, this relationship, what we're working through here, is a, a relationship in the book that is a good model for this empirical data. All right, so you could just go right to the graph and say, my ratio A1 over A2 is... Uh, is 0.25, so we go right here, we go up to about right there, which is about 0 0.57, 0 0.56, and uh, you can take that value, right? So, um, or you can run through the formula, which gives a 0 0.5625. Okay, so with that, we now know, and I should also say um, the, the, the diagram there, you had to use uh, the loss coefficient gets applied to the higher of the two velocities, so to the, v, to the velocity in the A segment. All right, so that's why it gets part of the A segment. I know it's a transition from the A to the B pipe, but you use the one that has the higher uh, dynamic pressure, essentially, so the higher velocity. So the total minor losses for that first segment we now know is about 1.36. Um, 
then therefore we have no minor losses in the B segment since that just uh, got absorbed into the A segment minor losses. We can determine the Reynolds number at B and also the, rough, the relative roughness is going to have a different value um, because we have a, a higher diameter pipe here. Find that, go to Moody diagram and we find that the friction factor here is 0 0.0215. Now we have all of the pieces to then determine um, our pressure at three. Write this all out. We now know everything. Plug everything in. We see that this is our potential pressure. Take off the losses due to the A segment. Take off the losses due to the B segment plus the, you know, the dynamic pressure that we gained here at point three. That's where this, the one factor comes in. And we get 460.2 kilopascal. So this actually didn't we didn't get much of a pressure drop from 0.2 to 0.3. It used to be like 461.6 or something. Could have done this also by applying the energy equation from 2 to 3. And here's the work for that. Same setup here, except um, we don't get to cancel as many things out. There's pressure at 2 that we calculated earlier um, in an earlier part. Uh, there's there's a, you know, a velocity head associated with the flow at 0.2. Uh, but Z2 and Z3, those are equal, so that'll cancel. Our velocity at B, we, again, we just calculated that from the volumetric flow rate and the, the wider diameter pipe. The friction factor at B is going to be the same as earlier. Um, so we have the major losses, and then we do have that minor loss from the expansion. These two were added parts from our early an earlier analysis, so we need to include both of these parts. Again, here we see that same factor for the expansion loss coefficient and we find that to be 0.5625. Solve for P3, and we find points, uh, the same exact result, whether you did energy equation from 1 to 3 or from 2 to 3.